Hi again. Welcome to the garage. I'm Pierre. This time around, I mean, uh, I know I'd like to be more present uh, on a more regular basis. Still some issues to uh, set up, but uh, settled, I say, sorry. Um, this time, it's a review. Banggood sent me this uh, setup here. It's uh, an adapter. Like the, the, the one that was going to be more practical for me was a three-quarter inch 19mm uh, uh, shank there to a uh, 22 milli millimeter adapter for the shell mill. This is a 50 millimeter uh, diameter shell mill using, uh, I think, 1604 inserts. Um, the results are going to be pretty good. We'll be testing it, like uh, pushing it uh, a little bit. Uh, this came, you know, the adapter, the uh, shell mill itself, and came with a box of 10 inserts for about 50... I think this setup is 50-something dollars. Uh, you can have the... Um, the combination with an R8, uh, lots of people use the R8 because um, you know, the uh, Bridgeport users will be using R8s and Bridgeport clones and uh, things like that. But this is more practical for the TJ100 uh, collets I'm using. Also, uh, this wasn't supplied, uh, this wasn't given to me by a Banggood, but uh, I purchased those. They're about twice the price of the other ones, but the uh, performance, I would say, is, uh, I think, uh, worth every penny of it. These are the they're Blue Nano um, inserts. They're meant for harder alloys. I mean, uh, they're meant for tougher uh, usage. And I think uh, you, may, you may enjoy seeing what is going to be done with it later. Also, we'll be seeing what the, uh, what's the wear on the, uh, on the edges. I'll be using this little scope there. This something I ordered last year. Uh, I don't even care to show you the uh, base at which it was supplied with, but uh, it was pretty awkward and pretty useless. But uh, now the new setup is supplied with this little uh, aluminum base up, down, uh, you know, easy, uh, easy setup. Just install it there, make it tight, it works. So this little scope, not a great microscope, but good enough for what we're going to be doing. Uh, also, just the base, take note that the base is sold uh, separately. For someone who uh, ordered to see uh, this little microscope and, uh, you know, still uh, hate working with the base or don't have a practical uh, solution to use it, uh, you can get this for about uh, 15, I would say around 15 dollars US. Just let's go, uh, let's go to the, um, to the, uh, to the, the review. Also, also, sorry about the sound. Um, I would have, I would have had to redo the whole, uh, the whole footage and it would take me like about a day. Uh, I had to adapt a new uh, wireless setup and uh, some of the presets. Now, yeah, the setup has nothing to do with it. It's my fault because the preset wasn't uh, adjusted all right for, for the microphone I'm using and everything. And uh, the sound is distorted a little bit. Not exactly as clear as I'd like to. I'd like it to be, but uh, sorry about that. And I uh, just hope that the next videos will be uh, so much better than that. Uh, so just let's go. Uh, with no further uh, delay, let's just go to the uh, review itself. The first test we'll do, uh, I, I install a stop in the back, in the rear there so it uh, keeps my block, uh, which is a Mitutoyo lab grade, so we don't, we don't have to worry too much about that block. One tenth of a thousand. Um, we're installing a shaft in there. I'm going to try to keep the pressure as constant as possible on my fingers there. And we'll rotate. See, we're uh, solid there. Let's rotate. See how uh, this deviates from the uh, zero. I gotta stop. Uh, when you move, the uh, reading is is not really uh, that's a, how can I say reliable because it just it will jump. So uh, every time I stop, I stop about uh, I don't know maybe every uh, 40 degrees or so, 45 degrees. So see that we're deviating uh, plus. So far it's plus minus one ta ten thousandth of an inch, uh, which makes the concentricity like. This axial concentricity pretty, uh, pretty interesting on that part. So uh, so far, I mean, I would say this part is very acceptable. It's uh, it's ground, it's hard, and uh, seems to be doing uh, a great job. We'll test the other uh, the other angle. So I'll remove the uh, tangs there, and let's get ready for the second test. Okay, we're going to be checking with this uh, test. I'll show you the uh, setup after this because I'm all set up, and if I let go, it's. Uh, so drag. We're going to be checking how accurately the perpendicularity of the uh, face mill where it's going to sit on this surface there uh, regarding the shaft. So um, let's just uh, start rotating this thing. This is always the same meter, one tenth of a thousand. And I'm going to be rotating this, uh, this adapter there, trying to keep the uh, pressure as even as possible. Okay, my friend Philip is going to actuate the uh, little lever so we don't... Uh, crash into the hole there. So far we're, I would say, close to a 
plus minus one tenth of a thousand. Uh, just like don't take into account when I'm in movement in there because uh, this uh, just sets after we stop. But so far, I'd say this uh, this adapter is a uh, excellent is an excellent adapter for uh, I don't know exactly the price when you buy just the adapter, but with the set it was like fifty something bucks with the uh, and the box of inserts. So considering price, considering everything, excellent product. Let's uh, let me show you. Just Philip's gonna raise the. Uh, the lever there oops sorry about this okay to make sure that uh, I wasn't registering on the, uh, the the surface behind there I had a little a few um, you know a few a few plates to uh, lift the thing high enough and I've got a little ball bearing there that uh, was installed into the, um, the centering uh, hole of the, uh, the shaft that's uh, you know that that in, that in this way you make sure that you don't uh, make your readings according to this surface there because this is not an important f surface it's not the uh, significant surface into the uh, you know the the tool but uh, so far I'm happy with this a little adapter for the second part of this I mounted the um, adapter into the my uh, my collet it's a TG100 with a uh, with a cone uh, 40 uh, 40 taper cone in there so I got about uh, total uh, indicated run out is uh, about uh, let's say two two tenths there one tenth off one tenth two tenths three tenths that's total indicated so that's really good that's one and a half so that's one and a half uh, radial yeah total indicated uh, run out on the ra radial so that's uh, that's excellent. I mean, I had to tweak it a little bit though. Just sometimes you put it on one side and it's better if you just sometimes just turn it around. You can tweak it a little bit and get the pretty decent results. Okay, now I'll be mounting the face mill on this. Remove this. There we go. Philip is, uh, Philip's here and he's helping me. I am doing the Vanna White. The Vanna White, yeah, sure. <laughs> the Vanna White syndrome. So I'm, I'm mounting the face mill on the arbor and uh, we'll be seeing how much, uh, how much we get with this. Next test, I installed the um, head on the adapter. Um, I had to fiddle around a little bit. First thing I did, I, t I uh, took the uh, harbor and I tested the concentricity with the, ax the axis of the uh, milling machine uh, squill. And uh, there was a side where it was a little bit more offset than the other side. So uh, by fiddling around, the uh, shaft that holds this is now within about uh, four tenths of a, of a thousand. Okay, next thing we did, I installed the inserts naturally, and I'm testing, this is a flat, uh, a flat head here on the uh, on the meter and uh, yes uh, um, this is one tenth of a thousand just uh, this is this is very very sensitive though they, uh, I'm trying not to touch or uh, move the uh, milling machine too much but where this is half you know the tenth of thousands are here I'll explain I'll uh, put the translations at the bottom of the screen for metric though uh, we're within uh, let's say half a tenth of a thousand this is number one they're numbered here I'll, I'll just be slowly turning around you see that it's not jammed in, the, in there. I'm, prelu I'm preloaded for 14,000. So let's say we're going to head number two, which, uh, there we go. These are tens of thousands. I'm getting a very nice result. I'm getting right dead on. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive though. And then if I go uh, there, it starts to, uh, go towards the uh, upper part and head number three oops <laughs> this is like I say it's very sensitive though okay this one is about uh, sorry about come on you what an attempt again okay let's go to head number four so the inserts and everything seems to be matching pretty good to the uh, the machine part. Okay, let's go to another. Oops, I'm wrong direction. I'm past. This one's zero again. I mean, I'm so far. I'm quite impressed that I'm getting that result. One note. Take a very good note of uh, the fact that I, um, I I did the first measurement of this. Um, you know, with the same conditions, but here the indexing uh, or the uh, 
I'll say the, the, the parts that lock, you know, the keys here that locks the part from turning, um, I inverted 180 degrees. Before that, the results I was getting uh, were like two and a half thousandths of an inch or uh, three thousandths of an inch. So by just rotating this and adjusting into the collet and, you know, a few adjustments, a, few, uh, a little bit of fiddling is uh, kind of required to get these kinds of results though. Because uh, it's like a, my milling machine is a manual, is a manual machine. It's not brand new. Uh, the collets, uh, the, the uh, you know, the the, the cone, is not brand new. But with a little bit of fiddling, the uh, these things, you know, these tools are, uh, I would say, very acceptable. Like, also got this um, head available with an R8, which is very popular among the, uh, you know, the um, let's say British port users. I'm very confident I'll be getting very nice results. Let's go right to the uh, trying it in the uh, actual situation where we will make chips. Okay, we're gonna uh, gonna be wiping this thing on the uh, on the top of this aluminum plate. It's about two hundred thousandths. A little bit of WD. It's gonna be mechanical feed. Turning about 1800 RPMs. Let's finish the uh, the top. What we're going to do now is uh, come back, make a, let's say we can make a two pass on this, finish the top completely, I'll be, uh, we're about 35 thousandths, but easy enough. Let it go to the end to see how uh, what kind of finish we're going to be getting. Back in. Okay, we're seeing here the final result. The finish is pretty decent, pretty good. We got a few retracts of the chips in there, but uh, flood coolant can uh, fix this pretty good. This is hot roll steel, and uh, I've set up everything. We're going to take a cut about uh, 25 thousandths plus minus uh, hair, small hair, and uh, slower. Ouch! This is hot. This seems like an easy task. Chips aren't even... Um, Fifty thousands. Engage. That's mechanical uh, feed. No. Nice finish, so these are the chips. Small curls. These are the uh, twenty-five thousandths, uh, smaller, mixed up with the uh, fifty thousandths. This is a uh, more like fifty thousandths. They're bluing. About normal. Finish. Push it? Finish on this. Not bad. Uh, we'll push it. Uh, yeah, we'll push it seventy-five thousand. 
Ready. Let it finish. Okay, that was 75,000, uh, 75, sorry. Uh, yes, we can stop there because it's whatever, uh, whatever people do with this, it's about, uh, it's about the limit, you know. Even a Bridgeport mill uh, is gonna be pretty stretched out at the 75,000. There you go, the chips are, uh, they're hot. 1200 RPMs. 75,000 steep with uh, doesn't seem to be bothering the machine too much. This is the finish on the uh, core roll uh, piece of steel. That's not too bad at all. I mean, uh, a little bit more interference in the entries and exits, but uh, so far looks good though. Okay, I've removed the um, standard standard inserts that have been delivered with the uh, the tool. These are more like for standard jobs, but I got some blue nano uh, inserts that I uh, kind of paid paid myself for uh, just to the uh, to see how they would uh, how they would perform. These are more made meant for uh, harder steel, harder alloys. Just uh, we'll make some a uh, little bit of testing with this. Also remember that uh, when tying up uh, inserts, just uh, seat them very light snug. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, cracking them breaking them and having problems to remove them okay now we're changing leagues we're uh, going with p20 p20 is a uh, you know quite hard this is uh, a nail though but uh, we'll be uh, slowing down a little bit because I'm uh, I'm actually at 12 1200 IPMs whoops let's put air was in neutral we'll go down to a thousand RPMs We'll be using about the same advance, same everything as before. Uh, very good feeling about it. Uh, P20 is uh, hardenable and uh, a tough material. Uh, this you can engage uh, full engagement. To me, it's getting like butter, but it uh, seems like a little bit more demanding than the other material. Okay, something I'd like to see about this is uh, we'll check out the um, rough cuts, but I want to make a very fine cut, like about uh, four or five thousandths. Okay, let's see how um, very tiny cuts in the hardenable material, just so what, what kind of a finish we'll be getting. It's about five thousandths. Same advance. Uh, we can even increase the speed a little bit. Twelve hundred. Okay, you've got four thousandths. That's gonna make holes in my t-shirt. Smell something burning. Okay, let's make two thousands. Shh. 
sure it's only 2000s. Thank you, block moved. Huh? Okay, these uh, these blue nano uh, inserts. Well, they seem to be doing a great job. Let's see the uh, finish on the part now. This is an example of how the uh, finish may look like on the uh, P20 part. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, this left track here looks better on the heavier uh, heavier passes, though. Lighter passes seem to be uh, not exactly looking as good, though. Okay, this is a. Uh the setup, how it works. I mean, it's pretty good, pretty solid. What I'll do, I'll do some recording from uh, directly from this. This records. You see the uh, the corner there. I'll be uh, turning around a little bit. This is this insert is the insert that uh, is supplied uh, was supplied with the uh, you know the shipping you know the shipping I had. Uh, not too bad, but uh, seventy-five thousand. I think is a little bit too much for this type of inserts. And feed and speed work kind of aggressive maybe I would I would suggest maybe 35 50 thousands for those inserts but uh, they didn't break they were still cutting but uh, see the uh, see the extreme edge there I mean this is a uh, this is eaten up I'll show you the other side that's a brand new uh, see brand new edge let me turn it around see the brand new edge this is how it looks like let's go for the uh, blue nano insert now okay this is one edge. This is the other edge. You know what my problem is? Which one did I use? And promise, it's coming from the... Uh, I'm stuck. I mean, I don't remember which edge which use. So, uh, these blue nano chips, they, they're more like... Uh, uh, maybe a little bit over two two dollars US per uh, insert, but I think they're worth every uh, every cent of their uh, of what their uh, you know their what their, their cost. And uh, the other, uh, I'll put the other insert there. See, there you go. This is the uh, normal insert. Normal insert there. Luna no insert here. Uh, for a few, you know, for uh, maybe twice the price, about uh, I suggest you get the uh, the better ones. They do uh, they do a fantastic. The P20 is not an easy material to work with, and uh, just uh, I mean it doesn't even show what I uh, it's been used. I'm every week I come to Pierre's, I mess up a shop, and then I take off before I clean up. Bye. Oh, Solomio! Arrête, tu fais shaker la patente. You're shaking the whole shop with the everyone protesting on top. Okay, never mind. Don't, that's out, anyways. <coughs> sure, I'll leave yeah, it. Yeah, no, take it out. Philip, Philip's here, so uh, Oh, Solomio is his. Uh, Hi. <laughs>